on the attorney side, most, if not all, attorneys will not help you with your initial claim. I'm, you know, I'd like to file a claim with the VA for X. Have you ever filed a claim? No. Go see an accredited rep somewhere, right? They are more about the appeal process, primarily to the board um, or to the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans, right? So they're either for the Board of Veterans Appeals or the U.S. Court for, for Veterans, right? Um, is really where the, the attorneys focus. Um, they don't really focus on your very first claim. Uh, and I don't know if there is a provision off the top of my head. I want to say there was, but I can't remember. So I don't know if they're allowed to or not. Maybe they are, but most just avoid that first claim uh, and push you off to an accredited rep somewhere. The claims agents, however, they'll dance that line. They'll, they'll help, you know, um, help you typically with anything you need help with. Um, and you'll also find claim claims agents that work with attorneys. So kind of like a paralegal almost that's uh, in some of these attorney firms. So you'll have an attorney firm that has a few attorneys or a attorney uh, and or an attorney, excuse me, Marine Corps. All right. Yeah. Um, so um, you'll have the uh, the attorney and they may have a claims agent that works with them to, to help them with everything. So um Obviously, they're focused on law. When you push your claim to the BVA, they are looking at law. Uh, when you push it to the Board of Veterans Appeals, they're looking, did the VA follow the law, right? And did they did they miss something as far as the law is a, it should be applied, right? And so they'll, they'll make a correction there. So, um, you know, some of this stuff is pretty vague in the uh cfr right mm -hmm. um so what what is economic inadaptability exactly right can, can i do i have to not work at all ever no no right so the attorneys have all these arguments they they they're the ones that understand the legal jargon right they reach in they'll pull up old cases to cite they'll put the work in uh like clay said because they're getting paid to win. Um, so kind of like the other, the, um, the claims, uh, consulting companies, they're, they're getting paid to win, not lose. So the difference is, is that these, the attorneys and the claim agents have that inside track, uh, and it doesn't cost as much according to clay, uh, because they are bound by law to only charge so much. They don't get to make up their own rules and however much anybody's willing to pay. So, if it were me, for most cases, I would try to file something myself. If I couldn't do that, I would try to find an accredited rep, right? Uh, and then if I got denied for some reason and I wasn't sure how to take it to the next level, I would consult with an attorney um, just from a cost factor. I'm a little bit cheap, not super cheap, but I'm not going to spend money I don't have to spend. As a last resort, I would probably utilize um, one of those uh, agencies that uh, charge you. But again, I mean, that's the, that's the whole point is that they, they, those places that charge the consulting companies, they're in business because people are going to them because they are yeah. willing to pay. Right. And, um, and there's a need. So um, there's a lot of different options is the bottom line when it comes to filing your claim. It's, it's, I think our big thing here. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, is shining a little light on each one so people are aware of their options and where they can pull the trigger on each thing and what makes sense and what's going to be advantageous for, for them with their claims processing. Uh, is there anything else you, you want to chime in with? There is. Um, because I, I, I try to remain objective this whole time, and I'm a fan of attorneys and agents personally. That's what I'm a fan of. But let's talk about the disadvantage, right? Just as I said, if a claims consulting company is charging for a presumptive, specifically a PACT Act, I think that's a hard no-go, and my book should be prosecuted by law. Now, on the flip side of that, when PACT Act came out, I don't have the data, but a question I want answered is how many attorneys charged in appeals 
for sinusitis, rhinitis, mm. asthma, IBS, bronchitis, all the other ones. Okay, those are the top five um, that were denied in 2015, 29, or 2009, 05, 2011, whatever. They were denied years ago. How many attorneys charged for presumptives after the PACT Act was passed? In my book, that is just as bad right as the claims told yeah. companies right yeah Especially it's, if you yeah, have it's a diagnosis it's predatory right it, yeah. it's it's that's a sad move and and it's taking advantage of of veterans in those situations and and specifically war wartime war in theater yeah. veterans right uh which which should absolutely not be allowed um if if you're looking for an accredited representative or a claims agent or a um attorney who's accredited, or you want to verify that one is accredited, you can do that. On the VA's website, through the Office of General Counsel, they have two different things. One, you can actually search for to find an accredited rep near you, but you can also, there's another one where you can actually type in the name of the organization or the name of the person to see if they are accredited with the VA. And again, being accredited with the VA doesn't mean that the person works for the VA. It means that they are accredited to process and file claims on your behalf. And that's what the difference is. Uh, I will also say that um, no matter what process you go through, you should absolutely sign up on va.gov to track your own kind of progress the best you can. It, in my opinion, they, they changed it for the worst. They kind of merged some things together, I don't know, maybe four years ago or so uh, when they took it off of e-benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, at least it gives you some idea. They have five different stages of your claim. It'll show you that they've received your claim. It'll show you that they're an initial review of your claim. They'll show you that they're uh, in evidence gathering, review, and decision, which used to be broke up into different sections, but they merged it all into one. Uh, and then uh, shows that it's prep preparation for notification. And then five, which would be it's that your claim is complete. Uh, and at that point, you should be clicking on the, the letters uh, to see what your rating is um, on the letters. But at least it gives you uh, something to follow and see what's happening right now. It's about 160 days for the claim processing time. Um, and again, even if you assign a representative to help you and, and, and you appoint them to, to represent you with the VA, that does not bar you from being able to call the VA, ask them what the status is on your claim, um, or follow any of it, or supply any additional. You are still totally able to actively communicate and work with the VA, right? Just because you're assigning somebody else to represent you doesn't take away your rights. So that's just another kind of important little side note. Um, so with that, was there anything else that you wanted to throw in there? That was my kind of last two cents. My, my very last two cents is yourself, VSO, attorney, agent, claims holding company, do whatever you want. My only ask is that whatever decision you make, it's an informed and educated decision. The only way, the only way you don't fall to a predatory practice, both on consulting and attorneys, is to just know you. That's it. Absolutely. Know you. Does my appeal for for sinusitis need to go to the board? Probably not, right? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna take a wild guess. Probably not an HLR or supplemental is probably the way to go, right? And so, um, do I need to go to a consulting company for presumptive? Probably not. Okay. Now you don't know that unless you are informed and educated. So as long as you do to, you do those two things, make your choice, get what you've earned, what you deserve, um, and take advantage of your benefits. You know, I and I want to double down on what you said and just add a little more clarification for folks because I think it's really important. So when Clay's talking about appealing like sinusitis, okay, we'll use um, sinusitis for the Gulf War era. You know, you, you were overseas in theater somewhere with burn pits, right? And we're going to use hypertension, high blood pressure for our Vietnam folks. If you filed a claim prior to the PACT Act being implemented, 
and you were denied your service connection for sinusitis or your hypertension denied right va denied you and now you're like well that sucks then the pact act comes through well the pact act took those two conditions along with many others and made them presumptives which means now the va will approve them but the va is not going to go back and go hey we messed up we're going to fix that for you right you need to go back to the va and say hey I filed for this before i'm filing for it again here you go and file that that uh supplemental claim showing that uh, you're filing for that benefit again and now they're going to approve it because it is a presumptive condition okay there's no there's no you know extra work that needs to be done and trying to figure out a different way and put in more work no it was just a change in the law that made that a very easy condition along with many others by becoming presumptive. So that's what Clay's talking about. I just wanted to shine a little more yeah. light on that so people fully understand because it's disheartening, Clay. I mean, I'm sure you've been denied claims before. I have, and it's frustrating. And and I think that as a veteran community, you know, a lot of us go and you walk away and then mm -hmm. that's it. So we can't we can't do that. We need to know when things change and know when we need to, you know, okay, take a knee, adjust fire, let's go. Right. And and that PACT Act is what changed those laws and made it easier. So with that, we'll end it there.